Okay, so we're recording, and this is the uh, PyScript community call for the 6th of August, 2024, which means everybody but Andrea and myself are on holiday, so it's a very special, uh, <laughs> very special holiday edition meeting. Um, so since there's just me and Andrea on the call, we don't need to do um, introductions. Um, Announcements, I guess there's nothing down on the thing, but I should say that we've had two August releases already. I'm only six days in um, with probably another one to come, at least uh, because of MicroPython related reasons, which we'll dig into uh, during this call. Um, so as always, Andrea and I just sort of uh, talk about what our upcoming work and priorities are. So I'm first on the list. Um, so I've been investigating a MicroPython bug, which I'll discuss later on in the agenda, uh, and had a quick face-to-face uh, -face chat with Damien this afternoon, um, which was rather cool. Uh, I've also been working on MicroPyTest and MicroMock, which is the thing that re made me realise there was a bug in MicroPython and a difference between the way MicroPython works and Pyodide works. Again, see, see in five minutes. Um, and the reason I want all of this testing framework up to date is so that I can then retrofit uh, our th that those t that testing framework to Invent, which currently uses PyTest, but I've been deliberately making this look like PyTest so that uh, MicroPyTest should run in the browser, no problem with PyDide and MicroPython. So that's essentially what I've been up to and what I intend to be doing this week, along with a whole bunch of other interesting things and meetings and stuff. So that's me. Uh, Andreo, what are you up to and what have you been up to? Um, so are we already talking about the uh, upcoming work priorities? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if that's the case, um, uh, spoiler alert, uh, today I try to uh, tackle a few bugs that were still open in, um, in our repo. Um, one of those bugs are mine, actually. And uh, sorry, <clears throat> most importantly, I want to clean up the test uh, situation because in PyScript, we have a Python side of affair in terms of testing um, that used to be mostly Pyodide related. And then I think Fabio or others did um, improve that situation and now it's not just testing Pyodide, but also um, MicroPython. And at the same time, the reason I wrote a few um, uh, playwright browser-based tests is because I actually don't want the mock. I don't want anything mocked. I just want to be sure that stuff works. And most importantly, at the beginning, was the easiest way to have MicroPython also tested too. But it's not clear at all, not even to myself, how do we, and sorry, I should have apologized uh, at the beginning, my voice is still not completely back, as you can, as you can hear. Um, at the very beginning, um, it was not possible to test MicroPython, and now we have integration tests that are just running the browser and doing the, the, the real thing, no mocking around, no nothing. And for me, it's also easier somehow to eventually run the test manually and spot differences and, and stuff like that instead of trusting entirely our Python-based um, orchestration to, to, to run all the tests. So, enough of uh, excuses for me to bypass the Python thing and use the real browser. But I hope this is reasonably good in terms of reasons why I did write some integration test that is not using our uh, current uh, Python test thing. And at the same time, there's, it's written nowhere how one would add tests yeah, there's no there's no flow for that. It's just me trashing some HTML and, and uh, code somewhere and uh, pointing at that file and yeah, there is an integration test. But this is definitely for contributors is not the best way to go. So I really want to take this uh, last week before we go on vacation. Of course, unless there's some obvious 
major bug to tackle, but I would like to uh, try to fix that properly, create some documentation and, and explain people why, how, and, and all the things around testing. Um, so that's it. That was my point. This is this is good because uh, folks may not realize that, but in this quarter, Andrea and I have a kind of a target to make sure testing is done nicely. You know, we've cleaned up the code base. It's now small and efficient and all of that. Now we want to make sure that testing is clear, well documented. There's an obvious way of doing things. And we might even be able to use MicroPy tests to run the test suites for things like, for example, uh, Blackstreet.web, stuff like that, because that's browser native and, you know, it works on both MicroPython and Pyodide and blah, blah, blah. So this is all kind of big pincer movement that the two of us are sort of doing to make sure that you know by the end of this quarter uh we can say yeah the testing story in PyScript was good but now it's amazing um so uh there we go you see what i did there uh so um uh that's all the upcoming work priorities and things uh so the agenda items i'm just going to go down these quickly um so uh, i just want to uh, uh, Andrea, thank you for um, uh, contributing to the uh, Great Pythonic API Bake Off uh, discussion. I have a draft of something similar to what you wrote, but you got there first, and I've been kind of slowly working on it when I had an occasional five minutes but haven't posted it. So um, actually, most of it is I kind of agree with, uh, you know, now that I've read what you've done, I could replace most of it with I kind of agree with what you said, Andrea, except for this change or that change. But that's the whole point is that we're, we're getting that. But I'd like to encourage people who might be watching this video later to go have a look at the discussion that's labeled the Great Pythonic API Bake Off and add your ideas. Just follow the instructions in the uh, in the top post there and it'll tell you what to do. And we would love for the community to be engaged in this uh, for several reasons. Most of all, um, the community has a lot of expertise. Um, we want to follow your guidance. Um, but also, uh, if or when, well, not if, when we make this change, we don't want the community to turn around and say, well, you didn't consult with us. Well, this is what we're doing right now. So there we go. Andrea. Yeah, one thing I would like to underline is that, that, that please, if you want to contribute don't be afraid of contradicting whatever uh, yeah. opinion or uh, solutions yeah. we have because it, it, it's going to work this way. I am, I, I'm going to contradict Nicholas or Martin and uh, somebody else is going to contradict me yeah. about some decisions. And But that that's not good. As long as we manage to have a productive conversation, then we can move forward and find the best way forward for, 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 for the community. So yeah, I think exactly. that probably not necessarily uh, a, a thing to say, but I, 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 I want to be sure that everyone knows that yeah. when we write our ideas, is not written in, sto yeah. in stones and it's just uh, it, feel it, free to, to, to tell us whatever you think about it. it. It's also important to say we're a friendly bunch and uh, whilst we do all have uh, opinions, some of them might be stronger than others, depending on what it is we're talking about. Um, the important thing is that we share those opinions constructively and in the spirit of trying to make something great or better or improve it or enlarge it or, or you know. Um, and so that inevitably means we are going to run into people who we disagree with. And when we disagree with them, we disagree in a spirit of being able to move things forwards in consensus. And, you know, that's kind of part of what engineering is about. So uh, for that to happen, it needs to be a safe space where people can feel, hey, I can say what I think. So say what you think, say it respectfully, uh, be compassionate about other people's contributions because they might have thought for hours about this. Uh, and if you dismiss it, that's not a nice feeling. So, you know, um, but I think we're well established that PyScript is a friendly place. So please, please, you know, come and contribute. So uh, the next the next item uh, is Minify Python. So our um, mostly thanks, I think, to the PyScript namespace, which is a bunch of Python code uh, out that that sort of PyScript standard library, as it were, uh, where we provide a whole bunch of Pythonic useful utilities has been growing um, and growing. And uh, this being the web, we want to kind of 
make it grow as little as possible because we need to deliver this over the network. Given that we want to expand that API so that we have wrappers around core browser APIs and they behave in a Pythonic sort of a way, we need to have some story around minification. Um, this afternoon between meetings when I only had like 30 minutes or so, uh, I had a quick look at the current state of minifying Python. I found a package called uh, Python Minifier, um, funnily enough, uh, that seems to do what we need. Um, I've started a discussion as well about that, um, but an initial test, again, on PyScript.web, it was, uh, where have I put it? Um, it was, uh, I've, done, I've removed the tab now. Um, let me find. Uh, so PyScript.web, was originally uh, uh, 36702 bytes. Uh, and now after minification is 26003 bytes. Um, so we are, uh, you know, it's reducing it by about a kind of a third to a quarter, um, the size, which is quite good. And it uses tricks like, for instance, instead of four spaces, which are four bytes, it replaces those with tab, which is one byte. Uh, but when you actually look at it in an editor, it looks kind of nice. It looks like standard Python, as it were, rather than a single space. It kind of puts things on a single line if it can. It it, it does, a, a, you know, single line imports if it can. It does all sorts of other kind of fun tricks to kind of minify Python. Um, this is used in Anger, the module that I found uh, Python minifier, because Lambda uh, on AWS has a, um, a four kilobyte Python script limit. Um, so lots of people are using this to kind of shrink their Python code uh, as much as possible down to that 4K. Um, but we can benefit from the work that this folk, that these folks are doing. It's currently maintained. It's got a community looking around their discussions. They try and do things properly as well. Um, so uh, it, it looks like a good, um, a good thing to do. So that's all happening in issue 2139. So go take a look at that if you're interested. Um, so the next item is my final item, which is MicroPython shenanigans. So uh, the, 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 the short story is I found several bugs in MicroPython. Uh, I dropped on a call with Damien earlier uh, today. We spent about an hour debugging a bunch of stuff. And he's like, uh, oh, my God, Nicholas, what have you found here? Uh, um, what was wonderful is, and I said this to Damien, it's like uh, Damien George in lane three has got the gold medal for debugging in the uh, current Summer Olympics in Paris. Uh, because what he managed to do is I had a unit test in my micro mock that was replacing a method on a class. Um, and then instantiating that class and checking that the resulting object, uh, that method that's been replaced, is the actual mock. Um, and uh, it was failing, uh, but it was working with Pyodide. Um Now, here's the fun thing that MicroPython has, is that if you want to know what's the right answer to a question about how does Python work, you just go see what the reference implementation, i.e. Python, does. And uh, and if MicroPython does something different, we've got a problem. Unless Damien, with his BDFL hat on, says actually we do it slightly different in MicroPython. But in this case, we had found uh, we had found a difference between the way uh, Dunder Getatra uh, is used in Python and MicroPython uh, because uh, it's complicated. Um, we also found another fun bug where if you didn't have a Dunder in it in a class definition, you could pass arbitrary arguments into the class when you in initialized it, um, which you shouldn't be allowed to do. Um, and we also found uh, another problem uh, with the import um, uh, where clearly sys.modules is being um, updated in some way um, and without a particular import it works in a different way. So anyway, the point is is that after that hour's chat with Damien, he had about four things to fix. Um, so I kind of felt, uh, yes, chief bug, fi uh, bug finder um, and watching Damien squash my unit test to the minimum possible example 
uh, was a, a thing of, you know, virtuoso Olympic performance there from Damien. So kudos to Damien uh, and bravo. And thanks for that. Um, he says he thinks he should be able to get to fixing it and um, uh, getting a new version of MicroPython out sometime next week. So I think by the time you get back um, from your holidays, we'll have a new version of, of, of MicroPython ready to, to bake in. Um, and we should be able to do a release. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's my kind of agenda items, just letting folks know that. Um, and this is what I like about PyScript is that we're, we're starting to use MicroPython in ways that Damien didn't imagine. Um, and it's highlighting all sorts of interesting things. And so I know uh, um, Andrea has uh, managed to find something similar like that as well. But we're moving on to Andrea's agenda item, which is 10 bugs down on our repo. Yeah. Uh, so first of all, I hope Damian will take a chance before next release of MicroPython to also fix the issue that I found. He, he, because... will. he will. He he said he has a he has a fix in mind, but it, it won't be until next week that he'll he'll be able to put some time into. It. Okay. Um. That, that that's awesome, and so I'm looking forward to the next. Uh, release of MicroPython. Uh, probably if I can share my screen, it's going to be easier for me to discuss yep, my just two things. Entire screen, built in display, yes. All right. Um, so, yeah, so this morning you, you see, or probably you don't, but now I'm, I'm trying to be sure you do. Uh, 11 open issues, and most of the issues are either third parties or something that we need to tackle properly, and, and, and a lot of stuff is just about cleaning up our own uh, repository. Um, this morning, it was 24 issues, so today I was like, okay, um, we, we're good. We just released, by the way, to, to 2000. 24.8.2 um we I, I, I don't remember if you announced that but basically it's um the, the biggest change is that now um both uh Pyodide and MicroPython they are a sync by default meaning that you have top level of weight by default meaning that you probably don't need to use a sync at your module yeah. Uh, as much as you used to, um, and so far everything is working lovely, and um, and we fixed also other few things, and so this is the so, so far the best the best version we can offer, and also there are a lot of um, this is important because it was part of this list of bugs uh, this morning. Uh, panel related issues have been fixed. Thanks to both panel uh, maintainers and us, uh, we did we, we did some investigation and we fixed a lot of things. Um, so that's cool. I hope for the community that bugs counting are down and not rising every time we release, which is a good sign that maybe we're not breaking everything, but also uh, it's August, so we never know if people are just on vacation. <laughs> uh, hopefully the former. Um, and there is this bug in particular is still there. Um, it's a very long time ago bug, but this class, the HTML uh, class, we, we, we still use it. We still offer it as a way to simplify when you have some content and you want to display it so that that class can help you displaying um, SVGs, PNGs, you can see here, PDF, JPEG. So this class was pretty cool, um, but it was inevitably uh, limited in terms of stuff that it could display. At some point, Martin here, um, uh, he guessed that PNG, uh, the, the, so the, the stuff we know just work, but there are a lot of other things that don't work. So I start wondering because there is um, a very famous and you can see yeah. it's downloaded 230 times per month, a million times per month. Um, 
and this is the the this Mim MimDB is used in the Node.js or Ban or uh, Dino or any any JavaScript related runtime when it comes to server side um, affairs and uh, in, in in this case there are a lot of people that are involved directly with uh, um, with, uh, with with all the standards around mimetypes and uh, mimetdb and, and so i thought how about we use this and and we try to have something like uh, and i created a demo a little demo um because I, I, I like to validate my my assumptions so yeah you can see already so if i do um mimejs mimesvg um or png um it, it always give you the the, the right thing and um, on top of that, if we find a way to provide this directly through JavaScript, because it's going to be already shrink, minified, and, and uh, improved in terms of performance and size, and it comes from a JavaScript project, maybe we can use this also for the HTML class and make the HTML class really um, uh, wonderful. And so I'm just tackling both the 10 bugs down. This one in particular, I would like to understand if that's the best way to go. If we can introduce this new MibDB and how big it's going to be, because no matter I try to shrink in terms of uh, references and strings, but the Mime DB type, uh, you can see I can keep keep scrolling. We have, we have uh, um, text, text, a lot of stuff. Uh, and at the end, we need to relate extensions to this Mime DB thing. And so this is our wealth, um, a very well uh, indented JavaScript. But you can see that we reached 5,870k. Yeah. So I don't know once minified and compressed. There's a lot of repetition in here because um, not in here. These are just spaces that we go. But we have like um, meme types, uh, like uh, VND. Yeah, I was going to say VND. Dot... That's uh, those are. I mean VND. These are private organizations. Um... All right, that's that's good to know. And so I don't know. The, the VND probably... stands for vendor. Vendor. So yeah. if it starts with vendor, probably we don't want any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That's the thing. The, this database provides information, but not all of them. So it provides the extensions. Um, if there is an extension that um, that makes sense for that particular thing. Um, but this is good to know. So basically, if um, the, the other thing is, is that vendors can just arbitrary create arbitrarily create new mime types by doing VND dot uh, Acme Corp dot my special thing slash something or other. Um, so okay, uh, uh, I, I, okay. So that knowledge of mine comes from twenty ten. <laughs> So that's almost 15 years ago. Um, so I would say if the Mime um, starts with, with VND, VND uh, continue. continue. Yeah, ignore it. OK, so if I run these, we don't have VND anymore. That's good. Yeah. And we are down to how many lines we removed? Oh, lost a couple of thousand. <laughs> 2,000 lines removed. Yay. <laughs> Yeah. Also, also, also. And probably there's also a lot of other well, stuff. Hey, hey, that we what, don't care. what 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 on earth is Andrew Inset at fourteen, line fourteen? I know. So this is meme type application Andrew insert. It means that somewhere on the web, uh I actually don't know what this is. But it means I, I, that I, somewhere. There I, I is thought it was extension. a test because you're Andrea and you'd put Andrew in. Or no, 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 no. Test, no, no, no. <laughs> this means that there is somewhere on the web, there is this application. Chemical. Chemical. There is some extension that points at this. Okay, so I, what, what on earth is chemical? Um. 
Pemicol um, is CDX SIF. So I told you this this meme type database is huge. That's why I'm trying to. I, I don't know if we should put all of it in here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm wondering also the font, what the X dash the font makes sense. The image makes sense. Yeah. What does, we what can does also... X dash? What does X dash mean? Because it's only repeating. If you go up, you can see in the um, in the audio yeah. above. Uh, you've got X oh down a bit, down a bit, down a bit, down, 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 down. Yeah. Okay. So you've got uh, X M F M four A when we've got. Hmm. X dash, X dash wav. There is some extension that points at this kind of yeah, 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 So yeah, this yeah. is gonna oh, be, man. I'm just wondering. Is gonna be audio, audio. Yeah. X as a meme type, and that's gonna be correct because that extension expect um expects this kind of meme type. Um, but because I'm shrinking things. I don't have a way to uh, yeah, easily yeah. tell you which one, so I need to count. I'm, I'm just looking um, at some. I'm just looking at real audio. I mean, that's a blast from the past. That's like 2004. I remember when real audio was the only way you could. So here um, you have all the extensions that yeah. give you one of those values back. Yeah. Um, MP4A. So it's hard from this database object to to tell you what's gonna what's going to work and what's not going to work. And yeah. so maybe we, we, we could use these to eventually have a, a simpler version that just strips out what we don't want and, uh, yeah. and it, it makes it easier to either maintain um, or create or, yeah. or bundle within our thing. Because I'm, I'm, I'm sure we probably don't want so this was early early hacking around yeah yeah, yeah. probably don't care about chemical um but i don't know about the rest because honestly yeah, even cross conference i don't know what's yeah. that yeah uh, but but there is some extension that okay so cool maybe we, we can take it. <laughs> that's what we do in this meeting though yes <laughs> but yeah you know so yeah. the the idea is to base whatever we want to deliver base our own things so i have this build script we can filter whatever we want yeah. and we can just say okay this is the amount of extensions we want to deliver and we can deliver that and provide uh, always the right meme type because this is working but definitely has too much in it and yeah uh, and, and yeah yeah, that, uh, yeah that's just the... just check the vnd stuff like i said because it's based on you know from 14, 15 years ago, knowledge that I had, because I, know, I, I, had to, I had to create, I had to create a mime type for some work in 2010. Uh, and, it, and I seem to remember it, the mime type was something VND dot fluid info, the company I was working for dot something meaningful. Um, so, um, yeah, it, it, it's in there. So my initial goal was just to translate whatever we have in there into something consumable yeah yeah um, and now we need to filter and fine tune yeah yeah whatever squash things and, and yeah exactly yeah, squash things as well. i think there is like andrew insert uh, insert i have no idea what is this i mean, I mean and also. some of this won't be won't some of this won't be applicable for the web given that we are actually working in the browser um you know, for that's, instance, that's a good point. That's a good point. We should have because you know, Sky, there, there, there are mime types for Skype, for instance. I happen to yeah. know that, and you know, we're never going to use them in a browser, so we should, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Cool. And that's it, Th those are my points. And, yeah. um, yeah, if if we are okay in uh, defining through a simple build step what we want to enable through our HTML, um meme type understanding uh then i have a prototype that works already we just okay. need to filter out filter whatever out extension yeah. whatever thing we want yeah we, we want to make it work yeah um so yeah that was uh last my last 10 minutes before this call happy you hacking, stop sharing because uh, i'm i'm getting vertigo as i kind of look into uh <laughs> thank you <laughs> sorry about that no, 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 don't worry don't worry cool um all right i I don't have anything else. Do you have anything else? Me neither. No. Okay. No. I mean, this was good fun. Um, and 
for folks who are watching later, this is generally kind of how Andrea and I interact when we're just kind of chatting anyway. Uh, when, we're, when we're doing work in, in the morning Euro time before the US wakes up and things like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, let me uh, stop the video and, uh, and until next time, folks. So let me just do that. Uh,